so from this session we will start with the RISC-V processor design so in this design wait a minute let me check once again yeah so let us start the uh, RISC-V processor design using Verilog so in this uh, uh, particular videos course videos processor design series uh, what we are going to do is we are going to design this uh, uh, particular modules which are called is instruction memory instruction fetch unit control unit and data path and this data path consists of this ALU register file and data memory so these are the following units which we are going to design using Verilog and this is a top module in which we are going to instantiate all this uh, particular uh, modules and I hope you are familiar with Verilog coding so that it will be easy to understand and proceed and follow up with me yeah so this uh, basic requirement is uh, you should be familiar with Verilog coding basic uh, coding should be uh, you are familiar with okay yeah so this is a processor design actually so this top consists of this uh, following modules which is instruction memory instruction fetch unit so control unit and data part so coming to this instruction memory all the instructions which we have discussed in our uh, course up to previous sessions what we have discussed all the particular type of instructions R type I type H type B type U type all these instructions we uh, I have framed I have written all the instructions in the form of binary okay I have written all the uh, all those instructions in uh, binary format I will show this uh, show that instructions also so all that instructions will be by default stored in uh, each memory location so R type instruction one example of R type instruction will be stored in uh, this memory location and another i type example exam uh, i type uh, instruction example will be stored in another subsequent uh, or sequential memory location similarly uh, h type instruction will be stored like this branch type instruction will be stored in, in another memory location like that every instruction is already uh, present inside this uh, instruction memory so this instruction memory uh, will act as a rom okay read only memory okay we cannot write into this uh, instruction memory actually we can only read from this uh, instruction memory using the instruction fetch unit basically this will with the help of this model we will uh, take the instructions out of this instruction memory is it clear about this instruction memory is it clear yes, yes sir, sir. Yeah. so using this instruction fetch unit we are going to fetch the instructions one by one with the help of the program counter which will act as a pointer so with the help of this PC, we are going to fetch the instructions from out of this instruction memory. Okay. So after fetching the instruction uh, instructions out of this instruction memory, we are going to give it to the control unit. Okay. So we are going to give it to the control unit. So this what control units do is uh, it will uh, segregate the instruction. It will uh, see what is function seven value. It will see what is function three value. And uh, it will see what is opcode value which is in the instruction it will analyze all these particular fields opcode value function 3 value function 7 value all these values will be analyzed by our control unit and after the analyzing it will come to a understanding that what type of instruction it is whether it is an R type instruction or H type instruction or B type instruction what type of instruction it is will be uh, decided by the control unit okay so instruction fetch unit and instruction memory don't know what uh, type of instruction it is holding okay instruction memory also will don't know so after coming to the control unit only we will come to know what type of instruction we are having is it clear the role of control unit is it clear yes, yes sir coming to data part so this data part uh, will actually consist of these three modules one is ALU arithmetic logic unit register file and data memory so register file as discussed this is a 32 bit risk free architecture so it will consist of 32 uh, registers registers okay 32 registers and the size of each register is also 32 bit and the size of each register is also 32 bit okay so uh, in case of r type instructions as discussed in our theory sessions uh, uh, so the data will be stored in this register file so here also uh, by default uh, uh, what I'm going to do is in while coding by default each register will contain particular data okay by default each register will contain after reset condition by default every register every location will consist of 
particular data no need no need of uh, loading any data into the register by default this registers will contain the data so why i am doing this is to uh, to make the process easy okay so if we want to write the uh, data into the register file from the tb it will make the structure more complex so i want to make it simple so that's why what i'm doing is by default the register file each register will contain the data okay is it clear yes, yes sir. sir yeah so from this register file in case of r type instruction what happens we have discussed it right in in case of r type instructions what happens the alu will take the data from this particular registers okay the alu will take the uh, data from the two registers one is rs1 and another is rs2 it may be any register okay rs1 and rs2 and what happens it will do uh, it may be addition operation or it may be subtraction operation like that it will perform and what it will do it will store back the result in some register okay so this operation alu will perform okay this is the basic example uh, of alu operation i'm giving okay is it clear yes, yes sir, sir. And coming to this data memory, I will explain what, why we are using this data memory. Okay. So this is a basic uh, architecture of uh, our RISC-V processor. This is what we are going to design. And still there are more and more functionalities. One by one, we will discuss in the uh, course. Okay. Yeah. Coming to the top module. So top module has only two inputs. One is clock. So we should provide the clock to the top module. With the help of test bench so with the help of test bench we are going to provide the clock and the reset signals from the test bench okay so this top module only uh, contains this all the modules which we have discussed it so this top model will, will uh, contain all the modules which we have discussed so for this top model we are just giving only two inputs clock and reset signal that's it that is also from test bench we are going to give okay is it clear yes sir next Coming to the instruction fetch unit, instruction fetch unit will basically fetch the instructions one by one from the instruction memory. Okay, so instruction fetch unit will fetch the instructions one by one from the instruction uh, memory. Okay, so the inputs of this instruction fetch unit are clock, so which is given by our top model. Reset is also given by our top model. So reset is active high. Okay, reset is active high. I hope you know the difference between active high and active low. So active high is basically yeah, yeah. Yeah. so basically active high is basically uh, for uh, when it is reset signal is high, the system will get reset. Or when in the case of active low, when it is uh, reset signal is zero, the system will be get reset. Okay. And we have one more signal called immediate address, which is of 32 bit, which is also input to our IFU and immediate address jump which is also 32 bit and we have one more signal called BEQ this is a control signal this BEQ, BNEQ, BGE, BLT jump these are all control signals okay these are all control signals sir yeah from where we will get immediate address means uh, in test bench or from yeah, yeah. where we will get I will get show it. the path where we are getting for, from this okay I will show you. So this BEQ is called branch equal. Wait a minute. Uh, let me turn on my laptop charger. Yeah. So this BEQ is called branch equal. So in branch uh, instructions we have seen, right? What is this branch equal? And BNEQ yes, yes. is our branch not equal. Branch not equal. And BG is branch greater than. And BLT is branch less than. And this is jump. Okay. So uh, these are our inputs. Okay. So if BEQ is applied, then uh, instruction fetch unit will come to know that branch equal instruction has uh, started or instruction branch equal instruction is given so the program counter will uh, jump to the immediate address which is given in the uh, instruction for example uh, if BEQ signal is equal to 1 that means uh, 
BEQ instruction has been given. Okay. So in the instruction, we will in the case of branch instructions, we will give one immediate value also, right? So to this immediate value, the PC will be jumping, right? PC plus immediate value in case of branch equal to instruction. So this branch equal to, if it is equal to one, then this instruction fetch unit will come to know that a BEQ instruction has been uh, activated and the program counter will uh, increment accordingly like this or else the program counter will be equal to PC is equal to PC plus four. normal increment it will happen. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, as discussed in that theory sessions also, this is our instruction memory. So in this instruction memory, all the instructions will be stored. So uh, each instruction memory, each location is of 8 bits. Okay. This is of 8 bits. So our uh, what is the size of the instruction? 32 bits. Yeah. So total four locations will constitute one instruction. Okay. One, two, three, four. This is one instruction. And next four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So this four will consist of second instruction. Like this, for every four locations, one instruction will be stored. Is it clear? Sir, why, why it is eight bit only? You can take uh, any number of bits, but uh, uh, this particular design is byte addressable. Okay, byte addressable, which means for every byte there is one address. Okay, for every byte we have one address location. Generally, most of the designs will be byte addressable only. That means for every location there will be a separate address. So if it is uh, um, more than byte addressable. For say, suppose if 32 bits has uh, one address, so it is also called as a, uh, like four byte addressable, like that it will be. So most of the designs will be byte addressable, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so each location will have one location, uh, one address location, like this. So in this particular design, I am considering it has to be a byte addressable, okay? Now, so, uh, for this uh, particular instruction, this is the starting address. Okay. This is the starting address. PC. Next. Next, where is the instruction? Here, right? That is PC plus 4. Next, where will be the next instruction? PC plus 8. Next, PC plus 12. Are you getting this? Yes, yes. So, this. Uh, PC incrementing logic that is first the PC, next PC plus 4, next PC plus 8. So this PC incrementing logic will be performed by instruction fetch unit. Okay, this instruction fetch unit. You can see the output of this instruction fetch unit is PC. Okay, so this PC incrementing logic will be performed by instruction fetch unit and it will be given to instruction memory. Okay, so in the block diagram you can see from the instruction fetch unit, you will be getting PC signal. So that is given to instruction memory. Is it clear? Yes, sir. And current PC, uh, I will discuss uh, this current PC in case of uh, uh, jump instructions. I will show why the use of current PC. Okay. So for now, uh, let's focus on PC. Okay. Now, so we have discussed about clock signal and uh, reset signal now so immediate address uh, this immediate address i will show where it is coming from so basically this immediate address will also be coming from uh, wait a minute i will show
So this is the code for top module. So in this top module, uh, you can see IF unit, uh, instruction memory, instruction fetch unit. So this is immediate value branch top. Okay. So this is the immediate value for branch type of instructions where we are getting from this. So yeah, I have written a logic for this uh, uh, immediate value. So basically we should do sign extension for this immediate value. Okay. Uh, when we come to, when we are discussing about this uh, immediate uh, I type instructions, I will I explain this particular logic. Okay. So we will go in order. Okay. Is it clear? Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Now, this immediate uh, address will be calculated from the top model and we will give it to the IFU and this this uh, this also. We will be calculating in the top model and we will give. And BEQ, BNEQ, BGE, BLT, jump will be given by our control unit itself. Okay. By analyzing the type of instruction which we have given to our control unit, uh, it will give the particular signals like BEQ, BNEQ, BG, BLT, and jump. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. So these are uh, explanation of these all signals. So these are the explanation of all the signals. So before going to uh, see the code for this instruction fetch unit, uh, a small assignment I want to give. Uh, so can you code for uh, I hope you are uh, familiar with uh, wedlock coding, right? So, can you yeah, code yeah. for this instruction memory? Instruction memory. I will, uh, anyways, I will show this uh, code for instruction memory. So, what is your assignment is? Uh, instruction memory should consist of uh, this following signals, clock, reset. Basically, I will give the specification. So, once trying uh, to code this uh, instruction memory, anyways, I will show it. So what is the requirement is, so at pause to edge of the clock, if reset is applied, uh, first you should declare, uh, you should create a memory, okay, of each location should be of 8 bit, okay. So uh, each location should be of 8 bit and there may be any number of location, any number of memory locations. For this project, I have taken uh, around one one zero locations because the, uh, the, my all my instructions are taking total one one zero locations. Okay, so for now you can take ten locations. Okay, you can take ten locations, and if reset is applied, then all these locations, all these ten locations, should be filled with a uh, binary value. Okay. Some random value you give it for now. Uh, we will discuss when we are, uh, we will see uh, what values, what type of instructions we should give in this instruction memory. So for now you store some uh, random binary value in this all, uh, all this 10 locations and uh, the output of this instruction memory uh, should be an instruction, should be an instruction. So the output of this instruction memory should be an instruction. So how you should fetch the output? You should fetch the output using this program counter PC. Okay. So this PC will act as a pointer. So for example, uh, if you want to fetch the location uh, data from the location four, the PC value should be equal to four. PC is equal to four. Then the uh, data which is stored in the location four will be fetched out. So like that, uh, this PC should work. It it should work as a pointer. Okay. So like this. Uh, Will you try it? Will you try to design that particular model? Anyway, so it's like ROM only, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, like ROM only. We need to design the ROM. Yeah. Basically. Yes. No need to give any input. We, we will directly store the data when, when we apply reset. Okay, got, so got it. it. Uh, I will try. Yeah. Okay. So if you try, you will get a better idea when, uh, when I'm giving the solution. Okay. So let me show the code for instruction fetch unit. So this is a clock source reset immediate address. I will show how we are calculating the immediate address and this immediate address is for jump and these are all the control signals. 
and this is my program counter which I will give to the instruction memory okay here I am generating the PC and this is current PC I will uh, so this is for uh, storing the data and address uh, current PC also we are getting I will show you yeah. so this is a logic for incrementing program counter so if it is reset I am making my program counter to 0 else if branch equal to 0 or branch not equal to 0 or branch greater than equal to 0 or blt is equal to 0 or jump is equal to 0 that is any of this instruction is not at all present okay so if all these instructions are equal to 0 that is it's a simple r type instruction then program counter will be incremented normal that is bc is equal to pc plus 4 okay or else if branch equal to instruction is present or bn equal any type of branch instruction is present okay then program counter will be incremented by pc plus immediate address in theory sessions we have seen right we are providing the immediate address in the instruction itself so accordingly pc will be incremented with that do you remember that yes sir yeah and in case of it if it is a jump instruction also we are providing the immediate address in the instruction itself do you remember the format yes 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 yeah so in that only we are providing the immediate address so the uh, immediate address which we have given in the instruction what we are going to do that uh, immediate address and how we are going to give it uh, to this particular model i will discuss it later for now see that we are just simply incrementing program counter with immediate address for now uh, don't uh, worry about uh, from where we are getting this immediate address okay 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 yeah next Next, uh, for storing the return address of the program counter. So, in jump instructions, we have uh, discussed in, I think, in two to three days back, we have discussed this uh, return address. So, while we are using this jump instructions, we are storing the return address or the previous in initial uh, uh, program counter value, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, if you remember, so in jump instructions, we will store our uh, initial value of uh, PC okay so we will store our initial value or return address of the program counter so that is the logic for this so if reset current PC is equal to 0 if reset is equal to 0 and jump is equal to 0 current PC will increment normally or else current PC will hold its value is it clear simple yes yes sir. okay simple. so this is the logic for instruction fetch unit okay. so yeah so with this, uh, we have completed this uh, instruction fetch unit and I will share this code also with you. So uh, once uh, try the instruction memory unit. So in next session, we will discuss with the, uh, uh, that instruction memory unit and I will show how we are uh, instantiating this instruction fetch unit with instruction memory unit. Okay. Is this clear? Is this motive clear? Yes, sir. So that's all for today's session. So if you are having any particular doubts or questions,